In this video, we're going to discuss how to work through acid base calculations. We won't be going through calculations related to buffers or titrations, but instead we'll be focused on navigating p scale calculations for both strong and weak acids and bases. By the end of this video, we will have created a calculation map and know how to use it. That way, you will be able to navigate from the starting information given in the question and passage to the correct answer which is the whole point of the map in the first place, to figure out how we get from where we were at right now to where we want to be. For example, if we started with a K value and needed to get to a PKB, we could do so by converting from K to PK, then to PKB. And as long as we know which calculations to perform at each step, this is pretty straightforward. With that in mind, let's start looking at those calculations and begin building our map. First up is the conversion between p-scale values such as pH, pOH, pKb, and pKa, and their non-p-scale counterparts such as hydronium concentration, K, etc. By taking the negative log of any non-p-scale value, we convert it into its matching p-scale. And if we want to go the other direction, we simply raise 10 to the negative px value and end up with our x value. The nice thing about the math here is that it's consistent across the different acid base values, so we only need to memorize the general form of the calculations rather than each individual one. For instance, if we want to calculate between pH and H plus concentration, then we would take the negative log of the H plus concentration to get pH and take 10 to the negative pH to get back to the H plus concentration. The same is true for the relationship between pOH and hydroxide concentration as well. And we can carry this over to Ka, Kb, Pk, and Pkb as well. Now, let's look at how we convert between two p-values. When we add up two b-values together, they must equal 14. We can generalize this as Px plus Py equals 14. For example, if Pk was 4, then Pkb would have to be 10 in order for the two values to sum to 14. And this same relationship also carries over to pH and pOH. If we put this together with our previous information, our map looks like this, where the p-scale values and their non-p-scale counterparts are connected as well as the two p-scale values. Now, let's look at how we connect the two concentration values together. When converting between either K values or H plus and OH minus concentration, then both of those values have to multiply to equal 10 to the negative 14. For instance, if the hydroxide concentration was 10 to the negative 5, then the H plus concentration would have to be 10 to the negative 9. With this information, we can complete the first portion of our map, where everything is connected by a calculation. Here we are seeing this for the H and OH values, but K and KB values work the same way, so the map for those values is the exact same too. The difference between the two sides of the map is a difference in terms of what they measure. The H and OH portion of the map look at what we have in solution, and we can substitute in strong acid or base concentrations for H plus concentration and hydroxide concentration. Whereas the K and KB portions of the map deals with the equilibrium of specific acids and bases. Typically, we will use this side of the map for weak acids and bases since they don't fully dissociate, and how much H plus or hydroxide they generate depends on their equilibrium values. Our map is almost complete. We're just missing the bridge between the two sides, which we'll look at soon. But before we do that, let's talk about how we use the map by looking at our initial example going from K to KB. To start, mark out where you're starting with and where you want to go. Now, following the arrows, draw a line between the two values. In this instance, we have two paths, one that converts from K to KB into PKB or from K to PK to PKB. While either path will work, I recommend converting between p-values whenever possible because this avoids having to deal with exponents and is typically easier. This means our quote-unquote route looks something like this with each calculation marked out above the arrow going to the next step. So if we started with a k of 10 to the negative 3, then the pKa value would be 3 since that's the negative log of 10 to the negative 3. And if the pK value is 3, then the pKb value would have to be 11 since that's the only way the two values would sum to 14. Now that we have seen one example of how this works, let's go through two more to solidify the concept. In this question, we are asked to find the pH of a solution with a hydroxide concentration of 10 to the negative 2 molar. Therefore, our starting spot is hydroxide, and we want to end with pH. If we follow our arrows and go through as many p-values as possible, this would end up being conversion from hydroxide to pOH to pH. 
taking the negative log of 10 to the negative 2, giving us a pOH of 2, which can be converted into a pH of 12. Now, let's look at the second question. In this one here, we're asked to figure out the KB from a pKa value. Again, if we mark out our starting and ending spots and travel through as many p-values as possible, we would end up converting pKa to pKb to Kb. Since the pKa is 5, the pKb must be 9, making the Kb 10 to the negative 9. You can see here, once you get the hang of using this math, these calculations are really fast. Up to this point, we have treated the OH slash H and K slash KB portions of our map as separate, but there are calculations that connect the two sides. Traditionally, the conversion from K values into either H plus or hydroxide would involve an ice table. However, ice tables aren't ever necessary on the MCAT, and the conversion here is no exception. Instead, we will use the equation KX is equal to X squared divided by weak concentration, where X equals the hydroxide or H plus. So if we want to convert from a K value into hydroxide concentration, all we need is the concentration of the weak acid. And if we want to convert from KB to hydroxide, then we would need the concentration of weak base. The important thing you have to realize here is that the given concentration of either weak acid or weak base will determine which path you take. For example, if you are given the KB value and the concentration of weak acid, you can't just plug in the weak acid into the KB equation. It won't work. Instead, you need to convert into K, then move forward from there. In total, our fully connected map looks like this. It looks like a lot to memorize, but remember all the conversions essentially have the same math. So if you know the conversion from hydroxide to pH, then you also know all of the other conversions into the pH scale. And the same is true for the rest of the map. Now that we've completed our map, let's look at two more examples to see how we bridge between the two halves. In this question, we're asked to find the pH of a 10 molar acetic acid solution, which is a Ka of 10 to the negative 5. Since acetic acid is a weak acid, we will be dealing with the K side of the map and we'll need to convert into an H plus concentration. Let's start by plugging all of the given values into the K equation here. That would be 10 to the negative five is equal to X squared over 10. Now it's simply a matter of solving this out. We'll go ahead and start by multiplying each side by 10 and that would give us 10 to the negative four is equal to X squared. We'll take the square root of both sides and now we'll be equal to X. To take the square root of something with an exponent, you need to make sure that it's divisible by two, and in this case, 10 to the negative four is. Now go ahead and have that exponent, and that's gonna be the square root of 10 to the negative four, which would end up being 10 to the negative two. So in total, our concentration of H plus is going to be 10 to the negative two, which would yield a pH of two, meaning here, A is the correct answer. Now, let's look at a problem that's going to require us to use as much of our map as possible. While doubt you would encounter something like this on your actual exam, this question serves as a nice recap of the different elements of the map and how to use it. In this question, we are trying to solve for the POH given the PKB and a concentration of weak acid. Let's mark everything out on our map and chart our course. We are starting with the PKB, need to go through the weak acid concentration and end at a POH value. So following your arrows means we will need to convert from PKB to PKA to KA to H plus concentration to BH and finally to POH. If we simplified our map, it would look something like this. And now all we have to do is work out the math. Since the pKb is 10, the pKa would have to be four and the Ka 10 to the negative four. If we plug everything into our Ka equation, we would get 10 to the negative four is equal to X squared over 10 to the negative two or the square root of 10 to the negative six. Therefore, the H plus concentration equals 10 to the negative three. This means the pH would be three and the pOH 11. Again, I highly doubt you would encounter a multi-step problem like this on the AMCAT, but hopefully it shows how easy it can be to sequence complicated acid-base calculations. All this is great, but we don't get a nice map drawn out on our exam for us. True, but if you understand the similarities between the math on both sides and the bit of math that connects the two sides, then drawing this out on the actual thing is pretty easy. I usually recommend you start by practicing with the fully drawn out map next to you until you feel comfortable with using it. Then from there, draw the whole thing out when needed. Once you're able to draw the whole map out consistently, try drawing out just the steps you need for the question in front of you. To start, this means you'll need a copy of the map and I have one available for download on my website as a companion to this video. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can grab a copy of your own and try it out on a few free sample questions as well. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more helpful MCAT tips. And if you want to support the work that I do here, consider joining my Patreon. There's a link in the video's description.